I'm Librarian Yamila Elkayat, and this is NNLM Discovery, a podcast from the Network of the National Library of Medicine. This podcast series explores how NNLM is improving the public's health by communicating in new ways. Today's episode is Becoming a Medical Librarian, a story from Region 5. One of our most popular episodes from this podcast series was a story talking about medical librarians, what we do, and why we're important. Today, we will follow the educational journey of someone who aspires to become a medical librarian, Christy Torp, who has worked for multiple NNLM regions and currently part of the NLM Associate Fellowship, is our guest today. Hi, Christy. Hi, Emila. Thanks for having me. It's so great to have you on today. So you don't quite have a traditional career path. Tell me about where you have worked in the past and why this sudden shift in your career to become a librarian. Sure. Well, I had my first child right before I graduated with my undergrad, and I decided to be a stay-at-home mom. But I always had little side jobs going at the same time. I did some property management at the apartment that we lived in, and that grew into helping some friends and neighbors manage their rental properties for a few years. But eventually, I settled on working as a piano teacher, and I really loved that. And then COVID hit, and I tried teaching online, but I really didn't like it. And so like a lot of other people that year, I just reevaluated my life. Um, I'd always planned on library school, but I just really never got around to it. And then in the summer of 2020, I saw a job for a medical librarian at a new osteopathic college that had um, opened near me. And it felt like the absolute perfect fit for me. So I applied for library school next week. I was that excited about it. You could have been any type of librarian, Christy, but I'm curious, why a medical librarian? Well, I had always wished I had become a doctor. Um, I did really well in my biology classes in high school. I even did pre-med for a bit um, during my undergrad years, but I really struggled with chemistry and knew that it just wasn't the right fit. Uh, But my library school advisor got me a pass to the Medical Library Association annual annual conference before my classes even began. And that just really confirmed for me that this was what I wanted to do. So how did you hear about the NNLM? Well, John Bramble, he works for the NNLM Region 4 office. He would attend a lot of our school webinars. And this is in library school. And he was always trying to get students interested in medical librarianship. So I heard him mention the opportunity to do a practicum with him a few times over that first semester. And I finally reached out to him. He had just made it sound so interesting. How cool is that, Christy? I worked with John too. I can see how he pulled you right in. Tell me more about what it was like being a practicum at Region 4. What did you learn and experience at Region 4 that inspired you to keep going down this career path? The practicum was a really neat experience. Um, As you know, NNLM is involved in lots of projects, and that means there's large amounts of collaboration and large amounts of files. So another student and I researched the best practices for organizing and keeping track of all of those files. And in doing so, I got a sneak peek into the different projects that NNLM is involved in. And I was really intrigued. We even presented our findings at the Mid-Continental Medical Library Association conference that year, which was terrifying as students but everyone was really, really kind. And I learned from that, that librarians are just the nicest people on the planet. And it just confirmed again, that this is the field that I wanted to work in. Aw, Christy, what a compliment. So after your practicum with Region 4, how did you get involved with Region 5? That was really amazing. Um, I had heard from another NNLM contact at the National Training Office that Region 5 was looking for a student or a recent graduate to help with a collection development project for the summer. And I love collection development. So I jumped at the opportunity and I got the position and I got to spend the summer working on uh, what's called the Diverse Voices in Health and Medicine Collection Development Toolkit. That's a mouthful, so I'll just call it the Diverse Voices Toolkit. It was completed shortly after I graduated with my MLS and then Region 5 asked me to stay on temporarily to help promote it and participate in some of their other projects. 
That's impressive. What a cool project to be involved in. So tell me, what were some of the highlights from Region 5? Oh, wow. Um, One of my favorite things was being a member of the NNLM Reading Club. Uh, They create themed book club discussion tools for librarians to use so they don't have to do all of that legwork. We did it for them. And that was fun. I learned so much about collection development from the other librarians involved in that. Um, Another highlight is probably just how supportive the Region 5 office is. Everyone there really believed in me and made me feel capable despite me being just a recent graduate with very little experience. I loved being able to help with the new Collection Equity Awards, which would help expand the Diverse Voices Toolkit. I'm I'm so proud of that project. It was great to work with librarians in the region receiving that award. So we know about the Collection Equity Awards from two previous NNLM Discovery episodes. Yeah, I hope that your listeners who haven't heard about the Collection Equity Awards will go back and listen to those episodes because these libraries did such innovative work. So after receiving the awards, the participating libraries shared a bibliography with the Region 5 office. It can be really difficult and time consuming to find materials about health topics for historically underrepresented groups. So essentially what we did was we crowdsourced them with these awards. My job was to deduplicate and then help classify all those resources. And then we compiled them into one document, the Diverse Voices Toolkit. So librarians can now use that as a resource to help them find items to diversify their health and medicine collections. And for anyone who's wondering, um, think about the time period this happened in. This is COVID. Uh, Mental health, particularly for historically marginalized people, was the most common topic. So after your time at Region 5, you applied for a fellowship at NLM. For those listening that aren't familiar with this program, what is the Associate Fellowship Program at NLM? Yeah, the NLM Associate Fellowship Program is a one-year training for recent library school graduates who are interested in a career in health sciences librarianship. It's so much fun. We have intense learning sessions with librarians and researchers at NLM to learn about all the work and achievements that the National Library of Medicine does. So we learn about collections, terminologies, research and development, outreach, databases. I could keep going. There's a lot. Um, The National Library of Medicine really does more than most of us realize, I think. We also get to select and participate in projects that affect libraries and users throughout the country. So it's really great for professional development, too. This is wonderful. I really want listeners to get a good idea of what projects associate fellows work on. Give me examples of some of the things you did. Sure. Um, All of the associate fellows this year did really different projects. Some did AI, others did outreach. Um, I mostly focused on collection development, so I'll tell you about those ones. I analyzed and gave some recommendations about a selection rubric for the web collecting and archiving group. I also reviewed and recommended some graphic novels for the graphic medicine collection. And that was really exciting because I got to utilize the Diverse Voices Toolkit and that felt really rewarding. And then currently I'm helping create collection documentation for NLM's newest product, the Dataset Catalog, which is envisioned to be like a PubMed for datasets. So it's really cool to be a part of that. I know it's a very competitive program. What did it mean to you personally and professionally to be accepted into this fellowship? Wow. Well, I know it's a huge professional accomplishment, um, but it's deeply meaningful to me personally. So a little over six years ago, I was ice skating and I fell and I hit my head pretty hard. I still really don't remember any of it, just being in the ER getting staples in my head. Uh, That brain injury left me with some pretty bad short-term memory loss, so even things like going grocery shopping became really difficult for me. Uh, I had always planned to get my master's degree someday, and after that, it really felt like that dream was dead. I honestly didn't believe I could ever learn anything new after that. Uh, So I got really depressed, and it's hard to ask for help when you feel completely broken like that, but I did. And I was able to get help from a speech therapist and a mental health therapist, and they gave me hope again. It took a lot of hard work and a lot of self-compassion, but after a couple years, I felt like I had the tools I needed. 
Um, and I'd say it's gone pretty well since then. So being an associate fellow right now, it's not just feeling that I'm as capable as I was before, but it's more about the power of support in your life. I can do hard things. That's what this means. I can do worthwhile things, but I can do those because there's people around me who believe in me and that helps me believe in myself. It's hard to put that feeling into words, but it's deeply meaningful. That's such a powerful story. So Christy, what are some of the highlights of this fellowship? Yeah, I loved being able to visit the National Library of Medicine in Bethesda uh, and just working closely with librarians on my projects. It's been fun to get to know them. Mostly though, I've just loved meeting with the people in each branch and division because people are fascinating. Their jobs are so fascinating, yes. There are scientists here who make imaging tools for cancer screening and other disease detection, and they're brilliant. And I love hearing, even though I may not understand it, I love hearing about the work they do. I'm just so curious about it. And they're so happy to share their knowledge with the associate fellows. So it's been a real treat having that opportunity. So what's next for you? Give us a little bit of a glimpse of your future. Yeah, so the fellowship ends in June and I am actively on the job hunt right now. My dream job is to go back to NNLM. I look at all the cool projects that NNLM members have done that you've highlighted in this podcast. I would love to help those libraries and be part of that again. In the meantime though, I'd love to get some more experience in library instruction or maybe in research support, but I'm open to a lot of opportunities. Christy, I see you've had quite the path there. So tell me a little bit more about what you would recommend to others that are aspiring to become medical librarians. Sure. I know that uh, medical librarianship can sound intimidating. I think because of the word medical, it makes you feel like you have to have this strong foundation in biology or medicine. And I've met some incredible medical librarians who don't have that. My undergrad is in history. What you do need to have is a sense of curiosity and a real passion for helping people get accurate health information. So what I would recommend is saying yes to opportunities, looking for opportunities and not letting that intimidation get to you. Um, Definitely reach out to NNLM, get to know people in the office. That can also be intimidating if you've never met before, but these librarians are so anxious to help people and they'll want to help you as well. You can look for classes from NNLM as well so that you can brush up on those medical librarianship skills. They've got lots of classes that are so worthwhile and they can really help you. Also join local organizations. There are so many opportunities to learn and to keep learning. Um, So there's a lot of ways that you can get support. This is so fantastic, Christy. You've really inspired me and I'm already in the field. I love what I do and I couldn't agree with you more about how rewarding this career could be. I'm sure this episode will inspire others and help those that may be sitting on the fence about this career make a more concrete decision towards becoming a medical librarian. Thank you for sharing your story with us, Christy. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. As you can see from this episode, the NLM and NNLM offer many opportunities for aspiring librarians. If you or someone you know is thinking about librarianship, please remember to reach out to your NNLM office to learn more about the resources they may have to help you. This is NNLM Discovery. Thank you for listening.